another chapter of Gun Guys. This is Ken Ackathorn on behalf of Wilson Combat. I've got a little bit younger gun guy than myself, but an old buddy of mine and quite a celebrity in the world of Berettas, Ernest Langland. And what I'm really curious about, Ernest, I know you've probably had a background with the Beretta in the 92 longer than anybody I know. Tell us about how this played out for you as far as your involvement and where you're at today and where you started with the Beretta 92. Well, uh, for me, Beretta 92 dates back uh, to my days in the Marine Corps. Um, I joined the Marine Corps in 85. We still had 1911s, uh, and, but the Berettas were already starting to come in. Uh, and I think I qualified the first time with a 92 in 1986, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Um, so it was a very early on uh, there. So the M9, a true M9, is a, was the, my first introduction to the Berettas. Um, and of course, later on, what happened was I started teaching at the HRP program, which was a anti-terrorism shooting school where we primarily shot Berettas. We shot some other guns, MUSOC 45s, other guns, but the Berettas was primarily the gun because that's the service pistol of the military. So we, I spent a lot of time shooting this gun. Yeah, and if I remember correctly, during your HRP <laughs> time, one of the things the Marine Corps is they sent people like you, the instructors around to different shooting schools, that's gun correct. site, Chapman, to learn the skills you have, you know. And I, it's kind of interesting, you're one of the more famous guys to come out of the HRP program as far as being in a training business. Tom Bullens, mm -hmm. uh, what was um, you, your old site? Don Roche. Don Roche. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's some real serious players that came out of that HRP program. Correct, that's true. Okay, after you got out of the Marine Corps, where did you land at Beretta? I did, I landed at Beretta, looking for a job, living in Northern Virginia there. Um, and I got a job originally in the service department at Beretta. Uh, and was competing at the time. Uh, so the story kind of goes is that uh, I wanted to compete. I was at the time, the only thing on the, the books was USPSA, IPSC. There wasn't anything else. So I was trying to figure out how I'm gonna shoot this thing in USPSA, yeah. stamp, jam more 40 in there, because you had to make major if you wanted to compete. And uh, lo and behold, an article comes out in 1997 uh, by Walt Rausch, um, on combat handguns about the new shooting sport, IDPA. Now, got to shoot from behind cover, draw from behind cover, anyone. I was like, they made a sport just for me. I mean, yeah. it's like, and, and in this gun and fit an perfectly. Was competitive, yeah. yeah, fit perfectly. 10 round mag capacity, all the things uh, fell into play there. So um, I won my first uh, IDPA nationals in 1998 with a regular 92G. Um, and that's when I started saying, hey, Beretta, why don't we tweak this gun a little bit? And that's when we started, I started the project. It was originally going to be the 92 Tactical, um, which was an overused name, still is an overused name to a certain extent. But uh, we came up with the 92 Elite. So, and there were a lot of features that it needed to be a gun that could be a competitive gun slash tactical gun. One of the big ones was a dovetail front sight. Right. And at the only time, the only way to get a dovetail front sight was on a Brigadier slide. That was the only slide that was cut that way. So Brigadier slide, front cock inserations, um, a couple of other features on the gun for beveled the original. Magwell, beveled Magwell. Beveled Magwell. frame. I don't think the checkering came out until the Elite 2. I you could may be, be wrong. right. I'd have to look uh, at mine. I don't remember. But, okay. but uh, so we did that. And then the Elite 2, so uh, I, I think it was the... Uh, I don't want to forget which national championship I won. I won. But anyway, the bottom line is we sold a bunch of them. Oh, boy. They were, they were very popular guns. Yeah. And so then the next year they came out and said, what were you saying about what we should do? Because, <laughs> you know, we sold a whole bunch of guns. And then all of a sudden now they're interested in the next thing. So then we did the Elite 2. And we needed to make it look different. So it had the stainless slide, but then extended mag button and the checkering and a couple of other <coughs> features. Oh, by the way, they were also all G models. Yes. Yeah. Decockers. Decock only because uh, the original, one of the big complaints always was that. So was the, the fact that people would sweep it on safe or not take it off safe and so forth. Um, and so that was, was the Elite 2, which was even more popular than uh, the original Elite. Big seller. So that happened. I moved on from Beretta to do other stuff in the gun industry and then other industries. Uh, but now full circle, we're back. Uh, and I... I left and started my own company up again and 
still reached out and said, hey, we're going to start doing some Breda stuff and came down. And so that's where the Brig Tech came from. Now, the Brig Tech actually was another project that I worked on. There was another gun called the 92 CQB, which is a really rare gun. I think there are seven in existence. Yeah. I know you have one. I have one. Well, actually, <laughs> Bill Wilson has it now. <laughs> he talked you out of it. Yeah. <laughs> he and made you a deal. And you Rob could, Hotch. He He's made, you, Rob's, made yeah. you a deal you couldn't. Uh, but oh, yeah. That was another gun that was going to be the kind of the ultimate uh, tactical Beretta. Um, and then, of course, the GSD. Uh, Super Dave Harrington gun, if you will, was the other gun. So Bill's gun, the Brig Tack, was kind of built around what he felt was the ultimate Beretta 92, which was the GSD. And so the Brigadier Tactical is very much that gun with a couple of other uh, tweaks that Bill added into yeah, it. And you had a lot of input with him mm -hmm. as far you even came down and kind of taught the guys how to do the trigger, trigger work, work and stuff correct, like that. Correct. Cool. Um, so we did that one. And then um, he did another compact version, a uh, short run of that, but then the Syntac, which is another Cent one, which Centurion, is yeah. the Centurion, this current tactical. gun, which uh, is my favorite. I've always, yeah. I've got one of the original early Centurions, mm -hmm. always liked it. So when Bill said he was going to go this configuration, of course, the big thing is not only the dovetail front sight, mm -hmm. but we kind of agreed on maybe a front sight that old guys can see. That's right. I, I, and everybody I, that's, that looks at these things go, oh, I love the sights. Right, you know? right. But so Bill did uh, basically did the same thing. <coughs> Bottom end is basically a brig tack. He added the mag mag guide on there, which is one of the parts that I uh, helped uh, the Wilson Combat design. But it's basically a compact slide on the full size frame. Right. As a kind of couple a other dentures, kind of a commander, kind of a yeah, yeah, commander, yeah, kind of like a commander. Yeah. And what people realize uh, with this gun is the slide weight or lack thereof makes this gun shoot really nicely. It comes mm -hmm. back very quickly. This gun, the Elite LTT, which is my version of the gun. So this is a full-size slide, but it's a standard Vertex slide. So it, it doesn't, doesn't have, have the, the extra... Lug, the lug like the Brigadier doesn't slide. have the extra weight of the Brigadier slide. Yeah. And I personally think they shoot better in 9mm because it's less weight. They track, it tracks, they track a little yeah. bit better. Right. So this is my personal gun here, a little beat up. But the front cock inserations on the gun. And the other thing we did was we radius this uh, trigger guard here on the bottom corner. Um, and then another radius on the back of the slide, but very reminiscent of the Brig Tac, the Elite, the GSD, all of these different guns. We brought all these different pieces and parts together to kind of make uh, this particular uh, configuration. So all of these guns, when you start talking about if you want a 92, whether it's the, the Brig Tac, the Syntac, which is a tremendous gun, the Elite LTT, I mean, these are the this is the way to go if you're in a state of the art. Uh, the state of the art when it comes yeah. to Beretta 92. Yeah. Right if you now. think of this as kind of the equivalent to the old 1911 A1 pistol, correct. Uh, then when you look at these, these are kind of like, in many ways, kind of like a lot of custom gunsmith took stock guns and turned them into quote combat or a finely tuned instruments, which this face it created a whole new industry. Uh, in essence, what Bill has done with his product line of Berettas and what you've just brought to the plate is kind of like bringing the Beretta back yeah. into a new world. I think Langdon Tactical is the number one purchaser of Beretta Wilson Combat parts. <laughs> cool. <laughs> we buy a lot of parts from Wilson Combat, That's a whole great. bunch of them. That's great. Well, listen, thank you, Ernest. I really appreciate some insight into uh, the journey you've taken to get where you're at. I appreciate that, Ken. Thank you. It's and an honor to good be seeing on here. you, brother. Hey, listen, folks, be sure and check out Wilson Combat YouTube channel. A lot of new info, a lot of new information coming your way. And hey, this was a real good tidbit today. I really enjoyed it. Hope you do too. Stay safe. Take care. Mm -hmm.